I was asked to talk about my mother, Ruth Stone, and her influence on my work and our collaborations. Well, in a way, a mother-daughter relationship is by nature collaborative. Looking back, it all seems to be a strange, fluid weaving. After my father committed suicide, my mother became fearful of losing me and my sisters. She didn't want me to learn how to drive, and I didn't get my license until I was in my mid-30s. Anyway, our cars were usually old, rusty wrecks. But she drove every season off to her university to teach. She was still driving and teaching until she was almost 87, but she didn't want her daughters to attend school. She thought it would hurt our creativity. She didn't want us to go anywhere away from our home, and yet she handed us in the most generous way total inner freedom, and the enormous, powerful belief in ourselves as creators. She taught us how to sing with words. She led us down a winding path, the winding path to the unconscious, where inspiration grew like the flowers she planted in her overrun gardens. Low, low, breathe and blow, wind of the western sea, oh. My mother always sang that lullaby to me to comfort me. She sang it to all of us. That song runs through me like a river, the way my mother's poetry runs through me. Vernal Equinox. Daughters in the winds, boisterous caught roughing, Pray the tickles equal to the coat tearing and the wearing equal to the puffing as you match breath and tugging after the winter in the thaw and the first heat of the sun's splinter. In your first ramble, daughters, with your laughing, loosed from the freeze when the grass is seeping, save your dimpled knees in the headstrong leaping, and under his cloak if you run with the north wind when there is the smell of hibernation in him and the black half-frozen waters of a dam, watch for his cruelty, he traps the lamb. Daughters under the birches in the green weeping, in the rain and lighting of the west winds keeping. Daughters does with tawny flanks shy stamping, nibble his water quick land with your hoofs tamping and dance. Do not rest or he'll have you sleeping. And daughters whose hearts are going higher, higher with your wild hair blowing into his high riding giant's bellows, observe the tremble of the weeping willows. Low, low, breathe and blow, wind of the western sea, oh. In this photo, I'm reading one of Mother's poems aloud to her, and it looks like it's a poem published in Poetry Magazine, from what I can see, tell. All of her daughters read her poetry to her, but I think my sister Abigail was the most involved and helped Mother select poems for her books and traveled with her to her readings. She's the one who edited and selected poems for In the Next Galaxy, which won the National Book Award. It was a true give and take with Mother. She always encouraged and praised our writing in return. February 7th, 1979. Dearest Peb, so far I've been able to get to a phone. No one is here during the day. It's bitterly cold in Goshen. I'm in the big house living in one room and shuddering most of the time. I'm keeping a small fire going in the stove, but worried and concerned about the chimney. I wish you would send to the New Yorker some stories while William Sean is still there. He won't be there much longer. He's in his 70s. Take warning. You're missing a good chance. Sandra Gilbert keeps sending things out no matter how often they come back and she finally gets accepted. She's getting famous now. She has a tough skin and she believes in herself. Here you are, talented too, and you don't show any persistence. Send, send, send to the New Yorker, to other mags. If they turn it down, send, send, send. This is the best advice you will ever hear. I hope you do hear it. Don't sit waiting to be discovered. It won't happen. You have to make it happen. Dear Peb, I love you. 
write to me, your ma, Ruth. Low, low, breathe and blow, wind of the western sea, oh. This is a contact sheet. Uh, a lot of the black and white photographs and some of the colored ones in the show are taken by my husband, the photographer, David Carlson. We don't have the film for this. We couldn't find it. We only have the contact sheet, but it shows my mother in her little house across the road from the larger place working on poetry. It shows, and here I am reading, uh, I think, from topography aloud to mother, and there are her old glasses, her glasses sitting on a manuscript, a letter from a, a, a college thanking her for coming to visit and how much it meant to the students and how everyone loved her. And the glasses are, I wear them, and my sister Abigail wears those, we wear those, all wear those same horned-rimmed glasses. Um, my mother cheered me on in return, writing, when I write my children's novels, she always listened to them over the phone while I was working on them. Towards the end of her life, I would read an entire children's novel of 200 pages aloud to her in one setting over the phone. It took almost all day. I remember the room getting dark around me as I read, and I remember my mother's laughter on the end of the, end of the line. She was my best and most important listener, and I know there are many other writers who would say the same about her. One of the expectations of, of, uh, of me as a daughter was that I would entertain her friends when they came to visit her and let her bring them to my house. And she'd go through the house with them like a museum curator showing them my paintings. Um, here's some photos David took of her at the, in the house and then um, my mother is pointing out to Beth Ensign whose poems we are reading in this pic photo. Here she's pointing out my paintings. Uh, my mother was very proud of my artwork always. And what she probably would have been showing her were some of my pastels um, my paintings are often done in a series of, 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 of almost like verses of a poem. Um, they, I, oops, I, they're done in a series, uh, one following another, um, and uh, they're symbolic, like like poetry. The sense of timing and drama, um, my understanding of lights and darks, and the understanding of pacing all came, I believe, from my deep grasp of poetry, uh, my mother's poetry. My, uh, I, and here are some of my more recent um, metaphorical, they tend to be more metaphorical and, and dreamlike, like a poem. These are very large pastels. Um, my mother always said that writing and painting were like play, and she provided for me an environment to play in. She always brought me paint, bought paints, no matter how little money she had. Um, and I think uh, that I carried on that knowledge of play when it came time to raise my son, too. And I know my sisters did the same with their children. We passed along the knowledge from my mother. Low, low, breathe and blow, wind of the western sea, oh. And then we collaborated on a book together, Who is the Widow's Muse? I read the poems that she had written and made a collection of drawings inspired by the poems. Her friend Candace Lombard, who arranged this session, also who was a widow, had asked my mother that question, Who is the Widow's Muse? And it set off an entire book of poems. The widow gathers her children into the kitchen. Here are the pots and pans, she tells them. Here are the lentils and carrots and onions. Here is the old place for sorrow. The children are here now, she thinks, but what about tonight? The muse rises in steam and disappears. Low, low, breathe and blow, wind of the western sea, oh. Sometimes it was the other way around. She would be at my house and she'd write a poem about one of my paintings. She wrote her poem Mantra while sitting on the couch in my living room, 
looking at a series of paintings on my wall I call The Beautiful Way We Fall. Mantra. When I am sad, I sing, remembering the red-winged blackbird's clack. Then I want no thing except to turn time back to what I had before love made me sad. When I forget to weep, I hear the peeping tree toads creeping up the bark. Love lies asleep and dreams that everything is in its golden net. And I am caught there too when I forget. Low, low, breathe and blow, wind of the western sea. Those were some photographs of my father, Walter Stone. Much of my mother's poetry was written about him, and she mourned him for her entire adult life. Longing for him was one of the many common threads that bound us together. But my mother was a survivor and ultimately buoyant. She loved her daughters, and in spite of her disapproval of formal education, she sent me monthly checks so that I could go to art school. February 24th, 1978. Dearest Phoebe, what a marvelous news. I hope they do let you skip to sophomore level. What great news. And she has a little drawing of a pig with a glass of wine. This is little Ruddy Pig. Ruddy doesn't give a fig. Ruddy's wicked, lazy, fat. Ruddy says that's where it's at. Horrors. What are pigs coming to? And she has a drawing of a little girl pig. And she says, this is little Jenny Swine. She's been sipping gallo wine. Jenny says that wine and pork are all she's got to catch a dork. Horrors. Are pigs slipping? You make me so happy, she says. And there's a drawing of a heart with a face smiling inside it. Here is my happy heart. I'll write a better letter soon. Love, your ma, Ruth. Low, low, breathe and blow, wind of the western sea, oh. We lived and breathed poetry. We played the poetry game. She sang and she coaxed and she cried and she produced poems. They fell like apples from the apple trees in the old orchard behind the house. Every year those trees in autumn would weep apples. And my mother, in her coaxing, keening, knowing way, would tell us, tell everyone, as if she were holding in her hands the real and only truth. When an idea comes to you, when a poem or story comes to you, drop everything you are doing. Don't wait. Write it down then and there. Whatever you do, Don't let it get away. Low, low, breathe and blow, wind of the western sea, oh. Thank you.